Chapter 33 Lenses and Optical Instruments Units of Chapter 33 include thin lenses, ray tracing, the thin lens equation, magnification, combinations of lenses, lens makers equation, cameras, film and digital, the human eye, corrective lenses, magnifying glass, telescopes, compound microscope, aberrations of lenses and mirrors. Section 1. Thin lenses, ray tracing. Thin lenses are those whose thickness is small compared to their radius of curvature. They may be either converging or diverging. Converging lenses are shown in Part A here, either they are doublet or plano convex on one side and plane on one side or convex, or they have two convex surfaces. Or they are diverging lenses, either double concave, plano concave, or concave meniscus, have two concave surfaces. Parallel rays are brought to a focus by a converging lens, the one that is thicker in center than it is at the edge. This is a converging lens. We have thicker material in the center compared to the edges, and this is used to converge some parallel rays into a focal point F. If these parallel rays are Along the axis, they are focused at the focal point F, the distance F, or if they are not parallel to the optical axis, these parallel rays, they will focus at a point away from the optical axis, but it's still at the focal plane. So this plane will be called focal plane. A diverging lens, when we have a lens thicker at the edges, but thinner at the center, this lens makes parallel light diverge. The focal point is the point where the diverging rays would converge if projected back. Some parallel rays are reaching to the diverging lens and they diverge, but if you backtrack the rays to the place they're diverging from, they all intersect at the focal point. The power of a lens is the inverse of its focal lengths. So the power of a lens is defined as 1 over focal length f. Lens power is measured in diopters, d. So one diopter is equal to one inverse meter. Ray tracing for thin lenses is similar to that for meters. We have three key rays. The first one is coming in parallel to the axis and exits through the focal point. The second ray comes in through the focal point and exits in parallel to the axis. The third ray goes through the center of the lens and is undeflected. So here in this figure, we are demonstrating these three ray configurations. So one ray from the object is passing in parallel to the optical axis and is passing through the focal point. The other ray is passing through the focal point. When it reaches to the lens, it will become deflected and moves in parallel to the optical axis. The third ray will pass through the center of the lens and will pass through it without any deflection. The image will be formed where these three rays are intersecting. For a diverging lens, we can use the same three rays. The image is upright and virtual. So again, we have an object here. We have a diverging lens. One ray is parallel to the optical axis, will be diverging, but we can backtrace it, which is passing through the focal point. Another ray can pass either through this focal point, but it's not intersecting with any other rays 
Ray number two can be backtraced into the focal point, and ray number three is passing through the center. The image will be formed here, and this is formed by some backtrace rays, and this is called a virtual image. Section two, the thin lens equation, magnification. The thin lens equation is similar to the mirror equation. We have one over DO, which is the distance of the object from the lens, plus one over DI, which is the distance of the image from the lens, is equal to one over F, the focal length of the lens. The sign conventions are slightly different. The focal length is positive for converging lenses and negative for diverging lenses. The object distance is positive when the object is on the same side as the light entering the lens. Not an issue except in compound systems, otherwise it is negative. The image distance is positive if the image is on the opposite side of the light entering the lens, otherwise it is negative. The height of the image is positive if the image is upright and is negative otherwise. The magnification formula is also the same as that for a mirror. Magnification m is equal to the ratio of the height of the image divided by the height of the object and is equal to minus di, the distance of the image from the lens, over DO, the distance of the object from the lens. The power of a lens is positive if it is converging and negative if it is diverging. In solving problems involving thin lenses, we have to pay attention to these four points. First, draw a ray diagram. The image is located where the key rays intersect. Second, solve the unknowns. Third, follow the sign conventions. Four, check that your answers are consistent with the ray diagram. Okay, let's look at problem number four in the book as an example. How far from a converging lens with a focal length of 25 centimeters should an object be placed to produce a real image which is the same size as the object? So, from equation 33-3, h, the height of image, we are being asked to be equal to the height of the object, and this is happening when the distance of the object is equal to the distance of the image. So the distance of the image is equal to the distance of the object. So we can use the equation 33-2, the lens equation, and 5 DO. So we have 1 over DI plus 1 over DI is equal to 1 over F. When DI and DO are equal, so we have 1 over DO plus 1 over DO, which is 2 over DO, is equal to 1 over F. DO is equal to 2F. If F is 25 centimeter, DO is 50 centimeter. Let's look at problem number 16 in the book as another example. In a film projector, the film acts as the object whose image is projected on a screen, as shown in the figure down here. If a 105 mm focal length lens is to project an image on a screen 22.5 meter away, how far from the lens should the film be? If the film is 24 mm wide, how wide will the picture be on the screen? So basically, this question is asking about the use of the lens equation, the equation 33-2, to find the distance of the object from the lens the object the image so let's use the lens equation do plus 1 over di is equal to 1 over f solve it for do is equal to f times di divided by di minus f let's plug in the values we have 0.105 meter 
multiply by 22.5 meter divided by 22.5 minus 0 0.105 meter which gives us distance of the object is equal to 0 0.1055 almost 10.5 centimeter from the lens to find the size of the image we have to look at the magnification equation magnification is equal to the ratio of the image size divided by the object size and that is equal to minus the distance of the image from the lens over the distance of the object from the lens solve it for the size of the image on the screen is equal to di over do multiplied by HO. If you plug in the values, we have 22.5 meter divided by 0 0.1055 meter multiplied by 24 millimeter. That is equal to 5118 millimeter, which is almost 5.1 meter. That's the width of the picture on the screen. Section 3. Combinations of lenses. In lens combinations, the image formed by the first lens becomes the object for the second lens. This is where object distances may be negative. The total magnification is the product of the magnification of each lens. As an example, let's go through problem number 20 in the book. A diverging lens with f equals minus 36.5 cm is placed 14 cm behind a converging lens with 20 cm focal length. Where will an object at infinity be focused? So as the question is asking, the first lens is the converging lens, an object in infinity, an image at the focal point of the converging lens, is given by equation for the lenses 32-2 so we say 1 over the distance of the object for the first lens plus the distance of the image for the first lens is equal to 1 over the focal length of the first lens let's plug in the values we have 1 over infinity plus 1 over di1 is equal to 1 over f1 that means the first image will be formed at the location of the focal length of the first lens which is 20 centimeter from the first lens this image will be the object for the second lens and we say since the image of the first lens in parentheses the object for the second lens is formed behind the lens therefore the object distance for the second lens is negative so if we draw the configuration this is the first lens this is the second lens and they're separated by 14 centimeters the rays of light are reaching from the infinity to the first lens and they are focusing 20 centimeter away from the first lens which is the focal length of the first lens this image is the object for the second lens and its distance is six centimeter to the right of the second lens therefore we say the object for the second lens is equal to minus six centimeter again let's use equation 33-2 for the second lens one over f2 and solve it for the place of the image for the second lens that is equal to do2 f2 divided by do2 minus f2 if you plug in the values di2 is equal to minus 6 centimeter multiplied by minus 36.5 so diverging lens divided by 
minus 6 centimeter, minus 36.5 centimeter, the focal length of the second lens is equal to 7.2 centimeter. Thus the final image is real and this is positive, therefore it will be formed at this place which is 7.2 centimeter from the second lens and the image will be real. So let's write it down. The final image is real and 7.2 centimeter beyond the second lens. Section 34, Lens Maker's Equation. This useful equation relates the radii eye curvature of the two lens surfaces and the index of refraction to the focal length. So we have 1 over f is equal to n the index of refraction minus 1 multiplied by 1 over r1, the radius of curvature for the first surface, plus 1 over r2, the radius of the curvature for the second surface. So if the light is coming from the left, it hits the radius of curvature of the first surface. Index refraction of material is n. It becomes refracted. It hits the second surface with the second radius of curvature, r2, centered at here, c2. And it will be refracted second times. Overall, f will become the focal point of the whole system. Remember that compared to the thin lens equations, we are taking into account the thickness and the material of the thick lens through n index of refraction of the material and radii of curvature. Okay, let's look at problem number 30 in the book as an example. A symmetric double convex lens with a focal length of 20.5 cm is to be made from glass with an index of refraction of 1.52. What should be the radius of curvature for each surface? Solve this problem. We use equation 33.4 for the lens maker's equation. But it says symmetric double convex. So radii of curvature, R1 is equal to R2 is equal to R, and we are looking for that radius of curvature. So we have 1 over F is equal to N minus 1, 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, that is equal to N minus 1, 2 over R, and let's solve it for R, is equal to 2 N minus 1 multiplied by F equal to 2, 1.52 minus 1 multiplied by 20.5 centimeter, which gives 21.32 centimeter, which is almost 21 centimeter, the radius of curvature. Section 5. Cameras, Film and Digital. Basic parts of a camera include a lens A light tight box, the whole structure, the shutter, and finally we need a film or electronic sensor where the image will be formed or recorded. A digital camera uses CCD sensors instead of film. The digitalized image is sent to a processor for storage and later retrieval. Some camera adjustments include shutter speed that controls the amount of time light enters the camera. A faster shutter speed makes a sharper picture. F-stop controls the maximum opening of the shutter. This allows the right amount of light to enter to properly expose the film and must be adjusted for external light conditions. Focusing 
adjust the position of the lens so that the image is positioned on the film. There is a certain range of distances over which objects will be in focus. This is called the depth of field of the lens. Objects closer or farther will be blurred or they become out of focus. So here is the light tight box for the camera. This is the lens. Rays coming from the distance object in infinity. It will focus at this location. But rays from a nearby object can be focused on the image plane where the film or the sensor is placed and we can have a nicely focused image. There are different types of lenses available for cameras besides the normal lens. Telephoto lens, longer focal lengths, magnified image, wide angle lens, shorter focal lengths, wider field of view, smaller image, zoom lens, adjustable focal lengths, digital zoom in digital cameras, and largest pixels with loss of resolution. All right, as an example, let's look at problem number 40 in the book. If a 155 millimeter telephoto lens is designed to cover object distances from 1.3 3 meter to infinity, over what distance must the lens move relative to the plane of the sensor or film? Basically, a question is asking about the maximum and minimum image distance from the lens equation 33-2. Using the focal lengths and the maximum and minimum object distances, by subtracting these two distances, we can find the distance over which the lens must move relative to the plane of the sensor or fill. So the lens equation is 1 over DO plus 1 over DI is equal to 1 over F. For DI max, we have F times DO min divided by DO min minus F and for DI min equal to F DO max divided by DO max minus F. Let's plug in the values for DI max. We have 155 millimeter multiplied by 1300 millimeter divided by 1300 millimeter minus 155 millimeter and this gives us 176 millimeter for the DI max. For the DI min, we have 155 millimeter again, multiplied by infinity, divided by infinite minus 155 millimeter. So this fraction simplifies to 155 millimeter. And the range over which the lens should be moving is 176 minus 155, which gives 21 millimeter. The range the lens should be moving to be able to form images of these two objects at different locations of 1.3 meter to infinity. Section 6. The human eye. Corrective lenses. The human eye resembles a camera in its basic functioning with an adjustable lens, the iris, and the retina. Here's a cartoon of the human eye. There's a pupil, light gets in. This is the lens of the eye with an iris, which is adjustable opening of the eye. And we have some muscles which can control the eye for different focuses for near objects or farther objects. And we have an image formed inside the retina. Can send the information of the image formed to the optical nerves to the brain to be processed. 
Most of the refraction is done at the surface of cornea. The lens makes small adjustments to focus at different distances. For example, if the object is at infinity, the lens and cornea of the eye will have the focal point placed at the retina where the image will be formed. But if the object is getting closer and closer to the eye, the adjustments of the lens to some degree can cope with that distance and they will have the focal point of lens and cornea to have a nice sharp image formed. But at closer objects, this focal length cannot be further adjusted and we will have a blurry image when the object is too close to our eyes. Near point is defined the closest distance at which eye can focus clearly normally is about 25 centimeter. Far point is the farthest distance at which object can be seen clearly, normally is at infinity. Near sightedness is the condition where far point is too close and far sightedness is the condition where near point is too far away. Near sightedness can be corrected with a diverging lens. So here is a cartoon of an eye which is suffering from the short-sightedness and this person is wearing prescriptive glasses or contact lenses to correct his vision and the image is formed properly and far-sightedness with a diverging lens. Here we're using a diverging lens to help the person with farsightedness to have a better focus of an object close to his eye. For example, for reading a newspaper or working with computers. Vision is blurry underwater because light rays are bent much less than they would be if entering the eye from air. This can be avoided by wearing goggles. So if we are not wearing any goggles, the next refraction of water is larger than air and the image will be blurry but when we are wearing goggles it will have a layer of air between our eye and water therefore the image will be formed sharper on our eye let's look at problem number 48 in the book as an example a person's right eye can see objects clearly only if they are between 25 centimeter and 88 centimeters away. A asked what power of contact lens is required so that objects far away are sharp. And B asks what will be the near point with the lens in place. To solve this problem, we have to point that the lens should put the image of an object in infinity. So if you're talking about the object infinity and the image is formed at 88 in front of the person's eye. And since the image is in front of the eye, the image distance should be negative. The question is asking about the power of the lens, which is 1 over f. Let's use equation for the lens, which is 1 over di plus 1 over do. Let's plug in the values. We have 1 over minus 88 centimeter plus 1 over infinity and uh, let's use 0.88 meter therefore for power p we have minus 1.136 diopter which is almost minus 1.1 for part b to find the near point with the lens in place we find the object distance to form the image at 25 centimeter in front of the eye. So the image is 25 centimeter from the eye, so it should be also negative, and we are looking for the object location. Again, let's use the lens equation, 1 over DO plus 1 over DI is equal to 1 over F is equal to P, and we know that P, the power of the lens from part A, we can solve this for DO is equal to 
the i over p times the i minus 1. And if you plug in the values, you have minus 0.25 meter divided by 0.25 meter times minus 1.136 diopter or inverse meter minus 1. That results in the object is equal to 0.349 meter, which is almost 35 centimeter. Section 7. Magnifying glass. A magnifying glass, or a simple magnifier, is a converging lens. It allows us to focus on objects closer than the near point so that they make it larger and therefore clearer image on the retina. So if you use a magnifying glass to look at an object, which is a small object, or near the focal point of the magnifying glass, we will have an image of the object form. Since the lens is diverging, we should backtrace the trace of light on the same side of an object which is larger and clearer. The power of a magnifying glass is described by its angular magnification. Capital M as the magnification is equal to the ratio of theta prime over theta. If the eye is relaxed, the angular magnification is equal to the ratio of H over F divided by H over N where n is the near point distance and f is the focal length. That gives us the ratio of capital N over f. This is the situation where i focuses at infinity when n equals 25 centimeter for normal i. If the i is focused at the near point, the angular magnification is equal to n divided by f plus 1 for the scenario where i focused at near point n and again n is equal to 25 centimeter for normal i. Okay, as an example, let's look at problem number 58 in the book. A magnifying glass with a focal length of 9.8 centimeter is used to read print placed at a distance of 8.3 centimeter. Calculate a the position of the image and b the angular magnification. For part A, let's use equation 33.2. The lens equation, 1 over f is equal to 1 over do plus 1 over di to find the image distance. di is equal to f do divided by do minus f. If you plug in the values for di, we have 9.8 centimeter multiplied by 8.3 centimeter divided by 8.3 centimeter minus 9.8 centimeter and that results in minus 54 centimeter the distance of the image for part b the angular magnification we should use equation 33-5 with the angles given as defined in figure 33, 33. Note that the image is neither at infinity nor at the near point. So this should be an approximation. So we say m is equal to theta prime over theta. This is equal to h object divided by d object over h o divided by n. And h of an object cancels out we have n divided by do and we have 25 centimeter for a normal eye and we have 8.3 centimeter for do that gives us 3x angular magnification section 8 telescopes a refracting telescope consists of two lenses at opposite ends of a long tube. The objective lens is closest to the object and the eyepiece is closest to the eye. 
the magnification is given by theta prime over theta is given by h divided by the focal point of the eyepiece divided by h over the focal point of the objective which results in minus the ratio of f sub o divided by f sub e the lens configuration for a telescope is shown here where we have an object lens which is toward the object placed at infinity and parallel rays from the object at infinity are reaching to the first lens the objective lens the objective lens is forming the image inside the telescope tube and the eyepiece will magnify this image and form an image larger and clearer and this image is virtual because it's formed with the backtraced rays of light into our eye. Astronomical telescopes need to gather as much light as possible, meaning that the objective must be as large as possible. Hence, mirrors are used instead of lenses, as they can be made much larger and with more precision. We're using a concave mirror as an objective and this is focusing the light into this spot and an eyepiece is magnifying that spot into our recorder or eyepiece or another configuration is where we have a concave mirror and the light through the secondary mirror is reflected is focused on this spot and using an eyepiece we can see clearer a terrestrial telescope used for viewing objects on Earth should produce an upright image. Here are two models, a Galilean type and a spyglass. As an example, let's go through problem number 66 in the book. The moon's image appears to be magnified 140 times by a reflecting astronomical telescope with an eyepiece having a focal length of 3.1 centimeter what are the focal lengths and radius of curvature of the main objective mirror the focal length of the mirror is found from equation 33-7 where we have m is equal to minus f o divided by f e we can solve it for f o f o is equal to minus m times Fe. Let's plug in the values for Fo. We have minus 140 times 0 0.031 meter, which is equal to 4.34 meter. The radius of curvature is twice the focal length and is equal to 8.68 meter. It's almost 8.8 seven meter section nine compound microscope a compound microscope also has an objective and an eyepiece it is different from a telescope in that the object is placed very close to the eyepiece so here we're looking at the side view a microscope a cartoon here shows where the object is placed very close to objective and is forming an image inside the tube inside the system of the microscope and an eyepiece is magnifying that image much farther and will have an enlarged version of the object the magnification is given by multiplication of magnification of the eyepiece multiplied by the magnification of the objective piece is given by n over fe multiplied by l minus fe divided by do for a scenario where fo and fe are much smaller than l that simplifies to n times l divided by fe multiplied by fo as an example, let's go through problem number 76 in the book. 
A microscope has a 1.8 cm focal length eyepiece and a 0.8 cm objective. Assuming a relaxed normal eye, calculate A, the position of the object, if the distance between the lenses is 16.8 cm and B, the total magnification. So for part A, since the final image is at infinity for a relaxed eye, the image from the objective is at the focal point of the eyepiece. We subtract this distance from the distance between the two lenses to calculate the objective image distance. Then we use equation 33-2 to calculate the object distance. So di1 is equal to L minus Fe and is equal to 16.8 centimeter minus 1.8 centimeter which gives 15 centimeter. 1 over Fo is equal to 1 over Do1 plus 1 over Di1 and if you solve it for Do1 is equal to Fo the I1 divided by the I1 minus FO. If you plug in the values, we have 0.8 centimeter multiplied by 15 centimeter divided by 15 centimeter minus 0.8 centimeter. And that gives us 0.85 centimeter. For part B, with the final image at infinity, the magnification of the eyepiece is given by equation 33-10a. M is equal to N over Fe multiplied by L minus Fe divided by DO. Let's plug in values. We have a relaxed eye, so we have 25 centimeter for N. 1.8 centimeter for Fe multiply by 16.8 centimeter minus 1.8 centimeter divided by 0.85 centimeter from part A which is equal to 247x which is almost 250x magnification section 10 Aberrations of lenses and mirrors. Spherical aberration is the case where rays far from the lens axis, these rays which are farther away from the lens axis do not focus to the focal point. And we can avoid this situation by compound lens system or only use central parts of the lens to avoid the spherical aberration. Distortion is caused by variation in magnification with distance from the lens. In the image here, we have an example of barrel and pink distortions. Another aberration is chromatic aberration, where light of different wavelengths has different indices of refraction, and therefore it focuses at different points. If, for example, we have a source of white light, different components of different wavelengths of the light will focus at different spots and causes a chromatic aberration. The solution to chromatic aberration is using a chromatic doublet, which is made of lenses of two different materials. Therefore, when the white light reaches to the achromatic doublet, it almost focuses at the same spot and it's forming back again the white light. Summary of chapter 33. Lens uses refraction to form real or virtual image. Converging lens, rays converge at focal point. Diverging lens, rays appear to diverge from focal point. Power is given in diopters, inverse meter. P is equal 1 over F. Thin lens equation is given by 1 over DO plus 1 over DI is equal to 1 over F. Magnification is defined as M, the ratio of H sub I divided by H sub O, 
that is equal to minus the ratio of the distance of the image from the lens over the distance of the object from the lens. Camera focuses image on film or electronic sensor. Lens can be moved and size of opening adjusted, defined as f-stop. Human eye also makes adjustments by changing shape of lens and size of pupil. Nearsighted eye is corrected by diverging lens. Farsighted eye is corrected by converging lens. Magnification of simple magnifier is defined as m theta prime over theta is given by h over f divided by h over n and it simplifies to the ratio of n over f for the case of eye focused at infinity and n is equal to 25 centimeter for normal eye. Telescope is an objective lens or mirror plus eyepiece lens. Magnification is defined as again theta prime over theta is given by h over f sub eyepiece divided by h over f objective which results in minus the ratio of the objective focal length divided by the eyepiece focal lengths.